Ellen Priester Jones. Welcome back to our series, Life, What Is It? Now today we're going to talk about the very unique way that God created us in his own image. According to Genesis 1.27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, did God just draw us from a picture of himself? Well, no, to assure that we actually were in his image, he did something very unique and special. He breathed his spirit into us from the very beginning. Well, according to Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. You see, every breath you take is evidence of God's Spirit inside of you. That's how everything started, God breathing into you. And that breath is essential to your life. Without that breath, you can't live. So that's essential. Well, not only that, God put Jesus in your heart right from the very beginning. You didn't really have to invite him in. He was already there. One day, you simply discovered that he is there. Jesus said in Revelations 3.20, he said, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And so right now, you have a knocking going on inside of you. Jesus is inside of you, and he is knocking right on your heart, right at the door of your heart, and we call that a heartbeat. Now, some people have assumed that we did have to invite Jesus in from somewhere out there, but that wasn't really true. He was already inside and he reminds you all the time. When you hear your heartbeat, he's saying, here I am, I am with you always. Now, God also created us in a way that we would always be together with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity is one, and they are one in us. We were joined with them from the very beginning. Now, some of you might be stopped in your tracks at this point and go, wait a minute, I thought I understood how they all came and how they all went and how they all fit together. Because even when we're taught that there is a trinity, that there is a one, whenever we talk about them, frequently we talk about them as if they do come on separately. Like actors in a play, one comes and one leaves and one comes. And actually, it gets pretty confusing whenever you start viewing it that way. Sometimes people think, well, God started things out by creating things. And then that went on for a while. And then eventually God sent Jesus to earth. And that kind of implies that God just hung out in heaven while Jesus went to earth. And then Jesus was there for a while, and then Jesus died and went away. But wait, Jesus came back, he resurrected, and he stayed a while longer, and then he went away again. And some people say they're waiting for what they call the second coming. And the Holy Spirit, well, he's somewhere in there too. People believe that we must do something special for the Holy Spirit to show himself. But that's not really the way it all fits together. You see, the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus are all together. They were together from the beginning. They are now, and they will forever be. Where one is, the other is, and that's the way it works. Deuteronomy 6.4 says it best. The Lord our God the Lord is one. Now, if you're having trouble wrapping your head around, how can three possibly be one? Well, let me give you a human example. A man might be 
the child of a parent. That same man might be a father himself. That same man might also be a husband. And actually, there could be other titles that that man would have. He might be an uncle. He might be a cousin. He might be any number of things. But you see in these examples that it's quite possible that one man who appears to be three is actually one. Now, when you discover that one truth, that the Lord our God has been, is, and always will be one, then things begin to make more sense. Now, for the purpose of our discussion today, let's refer to the three in one as God. That will make it easier to just use one word. But remember, they are three in one. And really, more than three in one, they are in you. Now, that's an amazing thought. God designed things so that they would be in you and you in them, always. Now, you might have thought that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit were separate, and as we said, they didn't show up until you did something that caused them to come into your life. But as we said, that's not quite the way it is. The truth is, they were all inside you from the very beginning. So it's not a matter of inviting them in or you doing something to get them to do something. It's about discovery. It's about discovering that they're already there. Now, is it really possible that you could have something inside of you and you didn't know it? Could all kinds of things be going on inside of you and you never knew? Well, actually, that's true. There was a time when you didn't know that you had a heart or lungs or stomach or intestines or any number of other things. And yet your creator designed them to be right there working for you on your behalf, even when you didn't know it. And one day, you discovered they were there. Now, in fact, probably there's a whole bunch of other things that are there that you don't know are there, but they are. They're working faithfully on your behalf. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit have been with you from the very beginning in every moment of your life. You've got the three-in-one working inside of you right now. You have God, the Creator. The Lord God goes before you, according to Deuteronomy 31.6, and He will never leave you or forsake you. And Matthew 28, 20, Jesus echoes, Surely I am with you always. In Ezekiel 36, 27, God said, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to follow my laws and be careful to do what I tell you. That is God's design. They are all inside of you. And Paul said, don't you know your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, whom you've received from God? You're not your own. Now, you can be unaware of God's presence. You can simply just, you didn't know he was there. You can know that he's there, and you can try to ignore him. You can know that he's there, and you can rebel against him. You don't want him to be there you know he's there, but you're going to try to just forget it. Well, you can try to get him to let you be God for a while. You can tell him to take a break, and you can run your own life for a while. Or, if you are really tired of the whole thing or frightened by the whole thing when you realize you don't really run your life, you can try to just evict him. Just throw him out. Tell him to go away. But you know what? None of that will work because God's design is he's at home and he is not going to go anywhere. He designed you to be together with him always. 
Now, David, the psalmist, discovered that truth. And David, quite honestly, when you read Psalm 139, it sounds like David didn't know whether to celebrate or have a panic attack. Now, once you realize that God is inside of you, has been forever, every place you've ever been, he's been there. Every place you are now, he's there. And everywhere you're going to be, he's there too. How do you feel about that? Does that make you feel excited and comforted and happy? Or does it maybe throw you into a panic attack? Well, I'd like you to listen to David's discovery. Listen to his words and dare to let it be your words. Feel God's presence right now as I share with you some of Psalm 139. David said, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand on me. Such knowledge is just too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and then the light become night around me. Well, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious, Lord, are your thoughts. How vast are the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. That's Psalm 139, 1 through 18. You know, one of the defining moments in my life came in a moment with just two words that God awakened in my spirit. At a particularly difficult time in my life, I cried out to God, giving him every detail of what had happened to me and what I had done. And when I ran out of words and I was just quiet, I heard him say just two words. I know. I know. And I suddenly realized that the only way he could know was that he was there. He had been there for every single moment of my life. When he was saying, I know, he knew at that moment everything about me. When he was saying, I know, he knew everything that was going to happen. Because I realized when he said, I know, he was saying, I know the plans I have for you. He was saying, they're good plans. Trust me, I know. Anything I didn't know, that I kept saying, but I don't understand, I don't know. His answer was, I know. And so what difference would it have made in your life 
If you had known from the very beginning that you were created to be with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit forever, that it was that way all along, what difference would it have made in your life? And the question is, what difference does it make now? When you know that now, what difference does it make? Jesus said, John 14, 20, on that day, and that day may be this day for you, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Remember, God said, I'll put my spirit in you, and I'll cause you to obey my laws and be careful to do what I tell you. So, Celebrate and be glad. You are not alone in this life. You literally have life radiating from you. You always did. You do now. And you will forever. Now, in our next episode, we're going to explore what being made in God's image means. Now, if you know some people that you look at them and you think, ah, I really don't see God in them. I don't see how they could be made in God's image. Does it mean that something went wrong? Were they really created in God's image? Or did God create some people just to be bad? Did he create villains? And here's a more personal question. When you are at your worst, do you see yourself? as made in God's image. Are you made in God's image? I'm Carolyn Priester-Jones, and I am looking forward to seeing you right back here on this channel next time.